<laughs> Hello and welcome to another Coding Train video about neuroevolution. So this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my previous finished, sort of finished version of neuroevolution, the process of evolving an optimal, the optimal weights of a neural network to solve some kind of, perform some kind of machine learning task. In this case, I'm making a guess based on the environment of this very crude Flappy Bird game. I'm not making this. The neural network is making a guess whether it should jump or not. And so this is a very simple, actually, scenario to solve. And so it's a nice demonstration of the idea. And, um, I've been meaning to return to this topic for quite a while so I can try to look at some more complex scenarios. Um, so neuroevolution is, can be applied to a lot of problems that different uh, reinforcement learning algorithms are also applied to, but it's a pretty different technique. And so if you, if you, there's like five or six or seven videos all about neuroevolution that I would uh, recommend you check out, or you can start right here because what I'm gonna do in this video is I am going to take the existing version that I made which used a toy neural network JavaScript library that I implemented in yet another video series to, to kind of learn more about neural networks and spin up a very, very basic one in JavaScript without other dependencies. Um, but I'm gonna replace that now with TensorFlow.js. So what you're seeing here is the last example from part five where I saved a trained model uh, and I'm loading it into a version of the game and watching it play out. What I did previous to that is what you're seeing right here, which is this is launching 500 random neural networks to try to make guesses. I can use this slider to sort of speed up the system. And over time, those neural networks are going to perform the processes of crossover and mutation. It's not actually doing crossover. It's doing crossover, which would be the act of combining two agents' genetic material together into one. I'm just taking one and copying it, but then I am mutating it to optimally search for the configuration of weights that will work the best. And just to remind you, what is, when am I talking about the weights? This is what I'm talking about. So we have the Flappy Bird game. This is the agent that needs to make a decision. It's, in a way, it's a classification problem. Should I go up? or should I not go up, right? These are the only two possibilities, a very simple classification problem, two categories. I have done, I am the human being have basically done the feature extraction. I could use the environment, the input to the neural network as this image, like all the pixels of the game. That would be a wonderful thing to try and I would love to do that, especially once I have convolutional layers with TensorFlow.js, which is not something I have in my toy neural network library. You might not know what a convolutional layer is. Don't worry, if I use it, I will explain it. But um, I have done that feature extraction. So I have decided that the core, the features that I want to use as inputs into my neural network are, I think it was like the bird Y position, the bird like Y velocity, uh, the top uh, pipe location, the bottom pipe location, and then uh, I'll call this like X, the distance to the nearest pipe. So these are what I've decided might be, are the important values to use from this game to feed into the neural network. So that means the neural network has one, two, three, four, five inputs. These all get normalized into a value with a range between zero and one and fed into the neural network. Then the outputs is a classification problem. So there are just two outputs and they would uh, each output a number if I got something like 0.8 here and 0.2 here. That means there's an 80%, basically 80% probability confidence score that I should jump, so I will jump. Now I could actually pick random numbers and, and that kind of thing, but I'm just gonna take the highest one, the arg max, so to speak, and go. So uh, neural networks are able to learn a sophisticated uh, uh, amount of information through hidden layers. So the inputs don't pass directly to the outputs, but the inputs pass through a hidden layer. And I, I don't recall what, what I picked as the configuration of the hidden layer, but I think it was something like eight. So if there were eight, I think that's what it is, we'll look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are what are known as dense layers, meaning every single node is connected to every node. I will not sit here and draw all of them, but I will start that process. Um, and then all of these, sorry, are connected to the outputs like this. So a neural network's core data, the configuration of that data is in a matrix because every one of these connections has a weight. So if they're five here and eight here, that is 40 weights. 
If there are eight here and two here, that's 16 weights. Now the truth of the matter is there's also a bias. So there's a bias for each one of these and a bias for each one of these. So there's, the configuration is all of the weights, all of the biases for each of these nodes. But this is the, these are the details that I cover a lot more in this series about building a neural network from scratch in JavaScript. So if you want to learn about that, you can go back. What all you need to know for here is that I have a way of creating this neural network. I have a way of feeding these values into it and looking at the stuff that comes out. So let's go look at that code. So if I go look at the code, uh, we can see that here. There's this idea of a bird object. And the bird object makes a neural network with five inputs, eight hidden nodes, uh, and two outputs. This is, I don't know what I've said here, but this is known as a feed-forward neural network. Multi-layered perceptron, it's two layers. The inputs, it looks like a layer, but these are just numbers coming in. There's a hidden layer and an output layer. That's an important terminology. So that's happening here, and you can see in the bird, the bird sort of like takes all of those properties, its y position, the closest pipe, the closest pipe's x position, its velocity, makes that into an array, feeds that into a predict function, and then I just sort of like, if the first output is greater than the second output, jump. So this is that process. And all of this happens in, all, in this neural network library. So there's neural network JS and matrix.js. This is like if, if TensorFlow.js was made by one person who really didn't know what they were doing, <laughs> that's what's in here. So what I want to do is I am going to delete this folder, right? I'm just going to, I'm deleting it. It's gone. Gone. Move to trash. Boom. So now when I go over here and I hit refresh, of course it doesn't work because we have no neural network.js. Can I get this, in, I don't have a watch on, in however long I have right now in the course of this video, working again without my library but with TensorFlow.js instead? That's the thought experiment here. So here's my HTML file and um, you can see that it has the P5 libraries, it's loading my neural network library, and then these are all the files for the Flappy Bird game itself, as well as a file that includes some information about how the genetic algorithm works. So what I want to do, I need to take these out. And then I want to import uh, tensorflow.js. So I have the uh, tensorflow.js website up, and this is the script tag uh, for importing tensorflow.js. So I'm going to add that here. And actually, I'm pretty sure that the most current version is 1.0.4. So let's add that. Um, and now I'm going to go back here and hit refresh. Now, of course, ah, neural network is not defined. So we've got fewer error messages here now, which is good. I just want to make sure TF is loaded. So like, for example, I can call TF memory and uh, there's no memory being used, but I can see that TF is, TF, TFJS is loaded because I can call TF functions in the console now, which I'm going to need to do to figure all this out. All right, so now that now I think the thing that I want to do is I actually, I don't need to do this, but I think it would be nice for me to create, a, I'm going to create a file called nn.js, and I'm going to make a little wrapper for a neural network. And actually, one of the reasons why I want to do this is, as you know, I've made a lot of videos using a library called ML5, which is a wrapper around TensorFlow.js, which allows you to work with some of the machine learning algorithms without having to manipulate the lower level details of TensorFlow.js. And so this is kind of a little bit of maybe a preview of that, because this ultimately, this idea of neuroevolution is something that I would like to work on putting into the ML5 library. So if I make a neural network class and I write a constructor, we know here that in the bird object, what it's doing is it's making a neural network with five inputs, eight hidden nodes, and two outputs. So there's no reason why I can't actually just do, keep that same structure. And I'm going to have uh, three arguments. I'm just going to call them A, B, and C because at some point I might need to call the constructor in different ways. And I'm going to then say uh, this dot uh, input nodes equals A this dot hidden nodes equals b, and this dot output nodes equals c. Then I'm, I'm going to put, I already, <laughs> by the way, I did this in a class that I'm teaching the last, last week, so I kind of have quite a bit of a sense of the plan here. So I'm also going to write a function called uh, this dot create model, because I might need to do that in different places, and then I'm going to make a separate function called create model. So this now is the function where I want to create my neural network. 
using TensorFlow.js. And I'm going to use the Layers API. The truth of the matter is this particular architecture, right? This is perhaps one of the simplest, most basic, vanilla, so to speak, neural network architectures. It's got two layers, one hidden layer, very few nodes, there's no convolutions, no fancy stuff, just the very basics. So I could probably do this with just simple TensorFlow operations itself, but I'm going to use something called tf.layers, which is um, actually based on Keras, which is a Python library for TensorFlow and Python. So many things. I've talked about these in videos. But basically, tf.layers is an API that allows me to create a model from a slightly higher level perspective. So the, one of the key functions in tf, tf layers, and I'm going to create a, a variable called model, is tf.sequential. So if I say tf.sequential, that should create for me a sequential model. Um, and we can just take a look at that here in the console and see, there we go. <laughs> it made something that works. You can see there's all these parameters. Is it training? Now, interestingly enough, what I'm doing in this video is not really what TensorFlow.js is designed for. Mo almost everything in TensorFlow.js has to do with uh, optimization functions and um, algorithms for learning and tweaking weights and uh, you know, back propagation. I'm not doing any of that. This neural evolution thing is quirky and weird. All I actually need is a bunch of neural networks and the ability to feed data through them, and then I can just delete and add and, and mix them up. So it's actually, most of this stuff will not get used. Um, but what I want to create then is my first layer. So the first layer I'm going to call hidden. So I'm going to say uh, let or const hidden equals tf. I think it's dense. So I think I better look up the documentation at this point. I certainly don't have this stuff memorized. So I'm going to go to the API, TF layers dense. So this is what I'm looking to do. And I can see a nice little example of it here, uh, this. So I'm going to create a TF layers dense, dot dense. And then I need a little object, which is going to contain all of the configuration information for that dense layer. And what are some things I can configure? Um, I can give it the number of units. Um, that's my hidden nodes, uh, which is the hidden nodes. I also want to tell it how many things are coming in, like what is the input shape. So this is the layer. I need to tell it about the input shape. I forget what that's called. Um, somewhere in here I'll find input dim, which would be the input dimensions, I guess which would be input this dot input nodes. I'm forgetting my this dots, as always. As always, I always forget. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, what else do I need? Uh, I think an activation function I definitely need. So activation, um, activation. Now this merits quite a bit of discussion. An activation function is, uh, is how the data gets processed as it's fed forward. So all of these inputs, the numbers that are these values, come in here. They get multiplied by those weight values, summed together, and passed through an activation function. The activation function's job is basically to squash the values, to sort of enforce nonlinearity, to allow for the stuff to go to the next layer. And there are all sorts of reasons why you might pick one or the other. There's more recent research and it's changed over the years. But and I've talked about this in other videos. I'm going to pick sigmoid as a kind of default activation function that squashes all values between 0 and 1. And I'll include some links about sigmoid in the video's description if you're curious. So I forget exactly what I do here, but I think I can just write sigmoid as a string. And somewhere in the documentation, there is a list of all the activation functions. Do I need anything else? I think that's good. So then I just want to say this.model.add layer, maybe? <laughs> so uh, TF sequential is what I'm doing here, which would be here. And oh, input shape is probably what I want, not input dimensions. We'll see. I'm noticing that there's input shape. So actually, I think that's what I want. I mean, that's certainly what I used uh, previously. So input shape, uh, and it would be uh, just that number of nodes, but inside an array. A shape is a way of defining the dimensionality of, a, of data. So if it's just a list of stuff, like a list of numbers, it's an array with five things in it. So, um, so that's how I define a shape. Um, so then I would say model.add. So this.model.add the hidden layer. Now I want to make um, an output layer, which is going to be tf layers also dense. 
and I want to, uh, what, do I, what do I want? The units is this dot um, output nodes. And then I actually do not have to define the input shape for this layer because it can be inferred from the previous one. So I couldn't infer the number of inputs from the hidden, because hidden is first. But the last layer here, I, these outputs, I know that I just added this layer. If it's dense, this is the shape of the input. So all I need to do is that. And then I also need an, out, uh, an activation function. Uh, soft, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it softmax. So softmax is an activation function which takes, which like sigmoid, squashes all the values to a range between zero and one, but it does something even more. It basically enforces that all those values also add up to one. It basically turns them into probability or confidence scores, and all of them add up to 100% or, or 1.0. And there's more to it than that. It's kind of uh, 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 in terms of how the mathematics have worked, but that's the basic gist of it, and that's what I want. I want the probability of whether I should jump or not jump. So now I should be able to say this dot model dot add output. And then if I go back to the documentation, I don't need to do this fit stuff, but let's call, uh, oh, do I need to compile it? Hmm. So interestingly enough, usually you need to compile, you need to give a loss function. Traditional machine learning, you're gonna have a loss function, an optimization function, you're gonna train it with data. I'm not doing any of that in neuroevolution. Remember, if you've watched my other videos on neuroevolution, I'm doing this weird thing. I just need a random neural network. That's all I need. So I don't know if I need that compile step, but I'm guessing I kind of do. So I'm gonna say this.compile, but I'm just gonna give it an empty object because I don't care about those other things. So let's try, let's, this.model.compile. So now that I have that, I should be able to, in, with my code, I'm probably getting a little bit further. Like, look at that. Cannot read property minimize of undefined. Oh, because I didn't give it any options. Let's get rid of the compile. Let's see if I can get this to work without this.model.compile. Maybe compile only has to do with the learning process that I'm not using. Great, this.brain.predict is not a function. So now I have the next thing that I need to implement. So where is that? That's in bird.js. And what is it saying? So I'm able to make the neural network and then I uh, am calling predict and I'm giving it an array. Perfect. So what I need to do now in my class here is I'm gonna write a function called predict which will receive an array. Now, what I would essentially be doing is now calling this.model.predict with that array. Only here's the complexity of using TensorFlow.js. TensorFlow doesn't work with traditional JavaScript arrays. It works with something called tensors, which are multi-dimensional arrays that, they're, they're multi-dimensional things, collections of numbers that are living in the GPU's memory. Um, that's for optimization purposes. Uh, the operations can happen faster on the GPU, which is optimized for a lot of matrix math. I don't really need that optimization to be clear because like, I'm working with the tiniest thing here, but I still need to convert this stuff to tensor. So I'm gonna need to say uh, the X's, I'm gonna call this, the inputs are often referred to as X's, equals tf.tensor. And what do I have? What's the shape of my array? It's one dimensional, right? It's just an array. But the thing is, what tensorflow.js expects, so this is like my data. It comes in as an array of numbers. One, two, three, four, five, right? All of this stuff, one, two, three, that's only four, but whatever, you get the idea. There's another one there. The thing is, tensorflow.js is kind of thinks like, you would never be so crazy as to give me just one thing. Usually you're gonna give me like a thousand rows or data uh, samples. So it's actually looking for a shape that is like this, that would have a bunch of these. Uh, so, it's, uh, so I just need to take my inputs and put them in a 2D tensor because it's an array of arrays. Uh, so if I do that, tensor 2D X's, I think that's all I need to do. Then I need to call predict with the X's. Now, that's happening synchronously. Uh, I need to get the data off of Oh, and this would be y's, sorry. The uh, y's would be the result of feeding it forward. So that's exactly this process. Predict is the function to feed this stuff forward, and now I have the y's. I'm gonna do something which is a little bit ill-advised. I wanna be able to look at those values. So right now, the, the y's are a tensor, and that's living on the GPU. 
In order for me to pull it off the GPU to use it, I need to call a function called data, which is getting the actual data, and that's something that happens asynchronously. So I need to deal with a promise or a callback, but I'm because I'm working with such tiny bits of data here, it's gonna be much simpler for me right now, at least to get this working, to just say, um, basically, uh, the uh, outputs equal y's data sync. So the data sync function gives me those outputs. Let's console log them and let's say return outputs also, just so we see what's going on here. So I'm now going to run this. Neural network.predict at bird.think is not defined. Hmm, what did I miss? Sorry, there's a major error in here that you probably all noticed, but I didn't. Th I'm taking that array and converting it to a tensor. So ARR is the array, and maybe it would make sense for me to call these inputs. I'm taking the inputs as a raw array, converting them into a tensor, passing them through the model, pulling out the outputs and returning it. Okay, let's see how that goes. Tensor 2D <laughs> requires shape to be provided when values are flat. Huh? Oh, guess what? This has to be inside an array, right? Because the whole point is it wants the 2D thing, so it wants that array inside of an array, okay? So that should fix that. Right, oh look, I'm getting stuff. I'm getting things. Why aren't I seeing anything? Oh, look how slow it is. It's so slow. So this is kind of ironic in a sense. Like I'm using a much more powerful JavaScript engine for deep learning that's that does all the operations on the GPU with WebGL to optimize it, and yet it runs super slow. This is really because I'm a crazy person and kind of doing this in a weird way that TensorFlow.js is not really designed for, um, where I like, have all of these different models and I'm copying the data with data sync. So there's a couple things I could do. Number one is, let's just, for now, and, and I'm, I'll have to come back to this or think about how to make this run faster or be more thoughtful and maybe do this stuff asynchronously, but what I'm gonna do right now is I am going to just reduce the number of birds to half and I'm also gonna do something a little bit silly, which I'm gonna in set up, I'm gonna say TF set backend CPU. Because actually, the amount of data that I'm working with is so, 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 so small. I don't really need to use the GPU. I don't need to copy stuff back and forth. Let's just use the CPU. It's perfectly fast enough. Remember how well it worked when I had my own silly little JavaScript library? So let's use the CPU, and I think you'll find that now, uh, it's still running like kind of slow. I have a feeling this console log is definitely uh, making things kind of unhappy. So let's take out that console log and let's refresh and there we go. So now it's performing pretty well. Is it as fast as it was before? I don't know. Could I get back up to 500? But it's better. Ah, but now we have a problem. Copy. So copy is not a function because I didn't write a function to copy a neural network. So what do I mean by copy a neural network? So normally this isn't something you would necessarily do, but it is fundamental to neuroevolution. And by copying it, I need to say like this was a good one. Let's make a copy of it to keep it. And I actually want to copy it, not keep a pointer to it, because I also want to mutate it, and I want to mutate it a bunch of times. So I have to figure out what is the way to copy a model in TensorFlow.js. And ultimately, if you want to try a more, the, the proper way to do this in terms of neuroevolution would not be to just make a copy to go to the next generation, but to, to take two of them and make a new one that's kind of a mixture. And when I say mixture, I mean mixture of all these weights. But I'm just gonna copy it. So what I need to do is I need to go back to this class again, and I need to say copy. So if I say copy, I could just say uh, return new neural network, and I could just put like input nodes, hidden nodes, output nodes, but it wouldn't have the right weights. Um, so let's think about this. Let's do, um, I'm going to say copy, uh, model copy equals this.create model. So I'm creating a model which is the same, ah, and uh, I need to create model with, um, oh, it, it has that stuff. So I can call create model, and it's going to do it with the right input nodes, hidden nodes, output nodes. Okay. So it's not a copy yet. It's another random neural network. But really, I, the architecture is the same. So in a sense, I've copied the architecture. I've made a new neural network with the same architecture. Now I need to get those weights. So luckily for me, there is a, in tf.js, there are two functions called like get weights and uh, set weights. So uh, let's take a look at those functions. So for example, if I go to the console here, 
and I were to say something like, um, can I say, uh, let uh, n equal new neural network, what is it, 852, right? No, 528, 582. So I'm making one of those. And so n.model is th that model itself. And you can see it's got all that data in there. So what I want to do is say n.model get weights. No? Oh, I said mode. I want to say n.model, can I just click here? Model get weights. These are all the weight matrices. Why are there four? Shouldn't there just be two? Well, there's four because there are the weights and the biases. One, two. The weights and the biases. Three, four. So that, that is what is here. So all I need to do is take these weights and copy them. So let's see. So I could say uh, constant weights equals this dot model get weights. And then I could say model copy uh, e uh, dot set weights, weights. And then I could say return new neural network with model copy. Now there's a bit of a problem here that I think I'm going to have to do, but this is pretty decent start, right? Make a model the same architecture, get the weights from the other one, then put those weights in the new model, and then return it. I think there's going to be a big problem here, but this is kind of the idea. So now, if I were to... Ah, what I need to do here is, now I'm making a neural network without giving it the input nodes. I need to basically say, if a is an instance of TF sequential. Is that right? Let's see. So if I go back to the console, uh, n.model instance, uh, instance of TF sequential. False. No. TF sequential with a capital? True. OK. So I need to check if it's a TF sequential object. Then this.model equals A. So in other words, I have two ways of creating a neural network. If I pass the constructor an existing model, then I just assign it. Otherwise, I create a new one. However, I've really always got to keep track of what, it's a little, this is some redundancy here, because the input nodes, hidden nodes, and output nodes are in the model itself. But let's just add another argument here, and then I can say also, this is awkward. But, and I, I could refactor this later. Uh, so now I'm also going to always require that I also give it the shape, basically. And so here, when I'm making this new neural network with model copy, I'm also going to say this dot, um, what is it? Uh, input nodes, this dot uh, hidden nodes, this dot output nodes. Okay? So this is me making that new neural network with the model's copy, and I'm also just giving it the shape also so that it sort of retains that information. So now, I should be able to go back, and we've got a copy function. Let me speed this up. Ah, okay, great. Ooh, cannot read property set weights of undefined. That's not good. Okay, I've, I've sort of made a mistake in the way that I've designed this program. What I want to say is this.model equals this.create model. And I don't actually want to set it here. I'm going to just make in the create model function, which is where I'm going to make this a variable, const model. And so, and then I'm going to say uh, model.add, model.add, and then I'm going to say return model. So this function, uh, this could be living somewhere else or a static function or something, but it's making the model and it is uh, in setup, I'm sorry, in, in the constructor, it is creating it and returning it and placing it in an instance variable or here it's creating it and returning it and putting in this copy variable. So that should work better. So let's see. Uh, great. So now I don't have a mutate function. No problem. <laughs> No problem. This is a way to deal with that. Bird.js line 33. Bird.js line 33. Uh, let's just not bother to mutate. No worries. Don't mutate. Let's speed this up. All right, let it run for a bit. We can sort of see, uh, did it get better? Kind of. 
but there's only one. They're all making the exact same decisions. So without two things are wrong here. Number one is without mutation, I can't get any variety. But there's something else that I'm pretty sure is wrong. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure is wrong, so I want to protect myself against this, is I haven't really made a copy. So I think in the case of my copy function, which is here, this is the weights as tensors, and I am assigning them to the copy, but they're all being assigned the same tensor. So even though there are multiple models, they're all using the same weight table. So if I were to mutate them, they're all gonna mutate in exactly the same way. So I need to really make sure I'm copying them, and there is a function in TFJS called clone, which is to make a new tensor that is a copy of an existing one. So I think what I should do is I should say, const weight copies is a new array, and then for let uh, uh, i equals zero, i is less than weights index i, i plus plus, no, sorry, weights dot length. So I'm going to iterate over all the weights, and I'm gonna say weight copies index i equals weights index i dot clone. So this is um, kind of the idea of like sort of deep copying, I guess, I'm not sure if I'm 100% accurate about that, but the idea of actually copying them into a new tensor, so it's not the previous one and then uh, I should be able to set the weights to weight copies. So this should be, um, this should guarantee that I really got it copied correctly. So let's do that. I'll run it again, speed it up a little bit. So it's still converging kind of into it ultimately being just one of them, that the one that happened to do the best, but it's not doing that because I haven't properly copied. It's doing that because there's no mutation. And you can see actually that it seems to be taking a little longer to get there. So I think maybe the copying is uh, better now. Okay, so I do need that mutate function. So what do I need? Uh, where was mutate? So I need a function called mutate and it's getting an argument point one, which is presumably the mutation rate. So the process of mutation in a genetic algorithm is to say, look at the genetic information, which is basically like all of these weights and biases, and one by one examine them and at some probability, make it some, adjust it, make it random, change it, mutate it. So that's what I need to do. So it's actually, it's more involved than just making a copy of the weights. I need to look at every single weight individually and then mutate it 10% of the time. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this, but let's see. Okay. So if I go into neural network and I go into, I made a copy function, now let's look at, sorry, let's look at mutate. So I wanna do the same thing. The first thing that I wanna do is I want to get the weights. Uh, what do I call this? This.model.getWeights. Then I want to maybe have uh, mutated weights. Uh, is a new, uh, just an array. So I get the current weight tables, and then, or, or, or weight tensors, sorry, and then I'm gonna go through and make mutated weights. So let me, once again, loop over this array, and I'm going to say uh, tensor equals weights index i, because it's a tensor. And then what I wanna do, I wanna get the values, so I'm gonna use data sync again. I want the shape, because I'm gonna need that when I convert it back. I think I can just do this. So I need the tensor, which is the data. I'm going to need to retain the shape because I need to put it back into a tensor, but I wanna mutate them. I don't think I can mutate the tensor without looking at the values. Who knows? So now I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna say let i equal zero, oh j, so j equals zero, j is less than values dot length, j plus plus. So the actual weight, which I'll call w, is values index j. And what I want to do is say values index j equals a new random weight. So I could do something like this, right? Just give it, like, I, I, I don't actually even need the current weight. I could just make a random one, right? I'm mutating, oh, but only 10% of the time. So this gets a rate. So I could say, if random one is less than that rate, then 
make a new weight. I do think this is a case where I might, there might be some benefit to rather than picking a totally new weight, and I don't know what initialization was used to make the initial random weights. That's probably somewhere in tensorflow.js, so there might be some operation I could call here, but I'm just gonna tweak it. So this is why I wanna grab that weight, and I'm gonna say weight plus, and I'm gonna use P5's random Gaussian function, which basically gives me a random number that's kind of near to, a, with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So it's just gonna adjust that weight a tiny bit. So it's like kind of what you might sort of see with gradient descent, dial up, dial down, but I'm just making a total guess. Just dial it some direction. So it's going to equal that. This loop is looking at an individual set of weights. It might be between inputs and hidden or between hidden and outputs, or it might be one of the biases of either of those uh, weights. And I have it as a tensor. I then have its values. Now I've mutated those values. Aha, I need to make a new tensor. New tensor equals TF tensor and give it those values again, right? The mutated values with the shape. So this is what's nice. I don't have to, I, I, other, I don't have to worry about what the original shape was. Data sync is just gonna flatten everything and give me all the numbers, pretty sure, I think. And then uh, what I can do uh, is then uh, mutate those, it's flat, I can put it back into a tensor with the same shape and it should be back just like it was before. I can say mutated weights index i is now that new tensor. So I grabbed the tensor, I got its shape, I got the values, I mutated them, I made a new tensor and it's gonna go into my new array of mutated weights. And then when that's done, I can say this.model.setWeights mutated weights. I think this is mutation. There, there is one mistake here, um, which is that tensor, sorry, which is that data sync is actually not making a, a copy of the values. So I'm still going to be stuck with a lot of things pointing to the same exact data. So if I mutate one and I'm, it's copied for like a bunch, all those are gonna get mutated in the same way and I wanna have a bunch of different mutations happening in parallel. I discovered this issue around data sync in this discussion, and thank you so much to one of the creators of TensorFlow.js, Neokiel Thorat, who answered <laughs> my question about this. So data sync uh, is mutating, I'm mutating the underlying values in the tensor. Apparently there's an array sync function that I could use instead of data sync that does an actual copy, but me, I am so me, a, a, a coding train viewer actually suggested that I just call dot slice, which is a JavaScript function for copying the array. So this I really, really need in there because um, I really have got to make sure that I'm not mutating the same underlying information. So I shouldn't add dot slice here. And then I think I have this done. We're about to find out. You know, the only way to find out, I mean, there's other ways to find out, I'm sure, is to let this run for a while and to sort of see um, if it gets anywhere. So I'll let that do that for a little while. So I would say that this worked um, because there we go. I have an agent that learned basically, again, it's very, this is a very simple problem for it to solve, but this technique that I've now done, there's no reason why it couldn't uh, be applied to a more complex scenario. So I now have neuroevolution with TensorFlow.js, but I'm not finished. <laughs> I, would, I, I could do this in the next part, but there's a huge problem here. I haven't thought at all about memory management. And if I do tf.memory uh, in the console, ah, I have a 28,870 tensors, and I'm using all these bytes, and if I, whoops, oh, sorry. If I start from the beginning, I have that many tensors, and look how it's going up. So I'm leaking memory like crazy. I'm not cleaning up any of the tensors that I'm using. Um, and so the way to do that, I don't know why I'm coming over here, but it's very important. Uh, in addition to the get weights and set weights function, there are two functions that I really need to be conscientious about uh, when working with TensorFlow.js. One is tf.tidy. And this is a function that you can basically give it a callback and any code that you put up in there, it'll do the cleanup for you. So it's kind of like 
TensorFlow.js is garbage collection feature. It's like, just put some code in here and don't worry, we'll take care of disposing memory that's not used. So this is probably what I'm gonna use most of the time, but any tensor I could also individually call dispose on when I'm not using it anymore. So let me go and find everywhere in my neural network code that I'm using uh, tensors and make sure I'm cleaning up memory that's not being used anymore. So I've got, I'm in my code, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. This should be fine. I don't think I need to dispose models. Maybe I do. But here, okay, oh, look at this mutation. So I'm, I'm creating new tensors, I'm doing stuff. This is definitely a place where I want to say TF tidy. And basically it's, the nice thing is it's literally as simple as this. I just put everything inside of TF tidy. So maybe there's a slightly more optimal, better way of doing this, but this should work. In predict, you know, this one's a little easier. Like I could say like, oh, I don't need the X's anymore. So dispose of those. And now once I have the outputs, I can dispose of the Y's. So I could put manual dispose in here. Like that's me disposing, but I think I probably will. Also just use TF tidy. Same exact thing. But there's a little, something else that I need to do here. Because this code is returning something, I need to return the result of TF tidy. So that should be fine. I feel like the model stuff is fine. This should be all the cleanup that I need. Let's see. I probably, oh, copy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess let's do TF tidy in here also. TF tidy. Uh, let's do this. I also need to say return since I'm returning a new model. I mean, I could put, I could put TF tidy in this. Let's see if I need to. Let's look at the memory now. So there's a thousand tensors. That makes sense because I have 250 uh, birds and there's four tensors, four weight matrices. That's a thousand. So three thousand. Oh, I missed something. So every generation, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping some of the old tensors that I don't need anymore. So let's try putting, I suppose, TF tidy here. Um, and also return. And let's see what happens. Ah, wait, ma something undefined. What did I mess up? Okay, that didn't seem to work, but I have a better idea. I don't know why that didn't work. There's probably a very good reason and I will hear from somebody about it. But I think I know what I should do. Where am I copying? Here. Oh, but I have TF tidy here. I was thinking that once I make this new neural network, I would call dispose on the existing model. Okay, after examining this for a bit with a little bit of help from the chat, it looks like the issue that I have is that, and it's a little bit weird what I'm doing here, I have a bunch of different arrays. I have birds, saved and saved birds. So saved birds is kind of like the previous generation, and then I make all these new birds for the next generation, put them in the birds array. But the, the models, the saved bird models still exist. So I need to dispose those. Um, and so the way I could do that is just find the place where I'm done making the next generation and then iterate over the saved birds. And a way I could do that is I could also like in the bird object right now, I could add a function called dispose. It's a little silly to do this, but why not? Which just says this.brain.dispose. <laughs> and then in um, the neural network class, I now have a function called dispose which I would say this.model.dispose. So that would, this is sort of a manual disposal of all of the uh, memory that that particular model is using. And then somewhere in the sketch, when I call uh, next generation, that makes the next generation. And then I go on, uh, that's in my genetic algorithm, which is here. So this is making, this is making the next generation and then clearing the saved birds. So before I clear the saved birds, I think it's, you know, I could just use this total value. Um, what I can do now is I can say saved birds index i dot dispose. So that should call the dispose function, which calls the dispose function, which calls the dispose function. So now it's, uh, I'm looking at a thousand tensors 
And then let me speed this up so it gets to the next generation faster. Oh wow, it just got like a good one. Next generation, and now, still a thousand tensors. So this is really complete. I mean, there's so much more that I could do, but this is complete in terms of the idea of neuroevolution with TensorFlow.js and this particular Flappy Bird game. All right, so what's coming next? What could you do? What could I do next? So one thing is, in my previous coding challenge, I saved the model to reload later, and TensorFlow.js has functions for doing that save and load layers model. I forget what the names of the functions are called, but they're in there. So I could come back and add that to this. Um, the other thing would be to apply this idea to different scenarios, to different games, to different environments. One of the things that I would like to do is work with steering agents, whether they're finding food or avoiding predators. That would be an interesting thing to try. So hopefully I'll come back and do this same idea, but with a different environment um, that maybe has more complexity to it with a less obvious result. Because I have a feeling that I could have gotten a bird to solve this game with just some if statements. Like I could probably guess like oh, you should always jump if you're too high, relative. you shouldn't jump if you're higher than where the, 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 uh, the pipe opening is and if you're lower you should jump. So you know I could write an if statement, instead I've used a neural network. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you make your own version of this, if you have ideas for how to make this better, uh, please let me know in the comments and also over at thecodingtrain.com you can submit a link to your version of this are running in the browser and I'll take a look at those and hopefully share them in a future video or live stream. Thanks for watching and goodbye.